Hey everyone, I'm Chris. Welcome to Always Paint the Rivets. And today I'm going to show you a really beginner friendly way to paint up some awesome Angels of Death. For those who haven't seen it, the Angels of Death is this awesome show on Warhammer Plus featuring the Blood Angels. It's shot in this grey, white, but bold red colour scale. And honestly, I absolutely love this series. And this colour scheme is really simple and lends itself to an awesome beginner friendly way to paint up some space marines. So whether you're new to the hobby, you've just got some new marines, or you want to try out a new color scheme that's quick and easy, but fun and striking to paint up some angels of death, this themed blood angels army, then this is the right video for you. You'll need two pots of water, one for washing your brushes as per usual, and one for watering down some paints that's going to remain a bit more clean. You'll need a palette, either a palette like this or a wet palette is absolutely fine. I'm going to be using a wet palette today. You'll need some kitchen towel. Importantly, we need some paints. I'm only going to be using five paints actually to make this colour scheme work. As for brushes, I'm going to be using this old chunky boy to do some large base coating areas. He's been through the wars a bit, but he'll do the job just fine. I'll use this medium sized brush from Citadel to do some of the more intricate base coating. I'm going to use this really fine size zero detail brush just because I know I'm going to have some really tight bits to do like the eyes. And the last brush is a dry brush. If you've not done dry brushing before, don't worry. I'll show you exactly what to do in this video. We'll be using some decals. It's useful to have something to hold your model with as well. I've got this holder that I was given as a present a while ago, but something like a shot glass with a bit of blue tack on top does just as good a job. And finally, our star of the show, we need our completely assembled Space Marine. Final step of preparation, I added two blobs of red, two blobs of black, and two blobs of white, all onto my wet palette. The reason why I've got two blobs of each colour is because I'm going to be using one blob for the base coat, and another blob for mixing together with some white later on. With all our equipment ready, we're ready to get painting. I'm going to start Neville, my trusty speed paint timer, and the first colour we're going to block in is that nice bold armour red. Using your clean water pot, make sure you thin your red paint a little bit. We need to apply two thin coats of red paint here, just to make sure we don't obscure any of the nice details of the model and really make that red nice and striking. I'm using my big old chunky boy brush, just the job for getting a lot of paint down in a short space of time. Don't worry if you hit parts that you know want to be black later on. The focus here is on speed and making sure you've got a decently thinned amount of paint. The red does look quite bright here, but it will dull down as it dries. Two minutes on the nose, base coat one all done. Wait for it to completely dry and then we'll do another thin layer of the same red over the top just to make sure we get that nice vibrant red armour. And once those two layers have dried, you'll have a really nice bold red armour colour. Next up, we're going to use our Just Off Black to base coat pretty much everything else that we want to be a different colour. Using my medium sized brush, I painted the gun, all the seals around the armour, but that's behind the knees, in between the leg joints, and watch out for the top of the arms, there's often a little seal that you can see there. Paint the belt as well as any pouches that are on the back of the marine. And while you're round there, paint all of the vents that are coming from the power pack. Finally, paint the right pauldron fully black, the central chest aquila, and then you can potentially switch out to your detail brush here. I kept with my medium brush, but you need to pick out the little ear pieces around the helmet, as well as these two wires that are feeding into the front of the helmet as well. And now with our red and black done, it does already look really nice on this marine. The black and the red have a really nice contrast against each other. And next up, we're going to be doing some dry brushing. Get a piece of kitchen towel ready and load up your dry brush with black paint. Apply a good amount of pressure and work the bristles of your brush right into the kitchen towel until you're getting to an amount of paint coming off your brush, something a bit like this. Now grab your model and what we're going to be doing is try and apply this towards the edges of all the armor panels. The reason why we wanted to get rid of as much of that paint as possible is because we don't want big streaks of black. What we want is bits of black that are going to sit around the edges of the armour and make it look battered and dirty. Work your way around the model, trying to angle your brush so it's heading towards the edges of each armour panel. This way you'll naturally get more on the edges of the armour and less on the flat parts, which we want to remain broadly red. But we do also want them to look a bit scruffy, so if you do spill over, do not worry whatsoever. We can tidy up later with a bit more red. And I was that into it that I even forgot to turn off my speed paint timer when I'd finished painting. Back to our blobs of paint from earlier. Add a roughly 50-50 mix of the black and the white together, and that'll give you a mid-tone grey. Then add a little bit more white into that grey mix, and it'll give you a kind of further highlight colour. Using the same dry brushing technique as before, grab that mid-tone grey we've just mixed up, and we're going to give most of the black parts a bit of a dry brush. 
focusing on the gun, the edges of the shoulder pads, and the pouches and vents at the back. Don't worry if you catch the armor panels, again we can tidy things up later if we need to. No need to clean your brush, but swap out to your lighter grey. This time, focus more towards the top of each of the bits you've just dry brushed. The top of the gun, the real real edges of the armor panels, and the very tiniest bits on the Aquila and edges of the pouches. This step is sort of replicating an edge highlight and adding a lot more visual interest into our model. And after that, our Angel of Death is really starting to come together. We have got a little bit more to do though. I want to get the armor panels tidied up as well as replicate that really distinct red eye lens glow that they've got in the show. Back to the red, and I'm using a detail brush here. I tidied up some of the armor panels. I really wanted to bring some of that red vibrant armor back. So I wanted to make sure that I focused on some of the areas where I'd scuffed a little bit too much of the armor with the black paint. Next, it was time for some steady hands and I blocked in those eye lenses with the white. While the eye lenses dried, I grabbed my black wash. All I wanted to do here was add a little bit more detail to the model and mainly break up some of those parts where we dry brushed earlier, just by separating some of the parts of the gun that would normally be metallic versus a panel and some of the elements of the bottom of the feet and things like that where it would normally look a bit more grimy and dirty than the rest of the armor. Then it was back to the eye lenses. I used my orange glaze here because I really wanted to make those eyes really, really vibrant and stand out. I glazed over all of the white in both eyes, then added a little dot of white back to my brush and dotted that right into the front center of those eye lenses. I was a little bit enthusiastic with the white in the left eye lens, so I just tidied that back up with a little bit more orange glaze. Now our angel of death is really starting to come together, but that base looks super messy. Let's tidy that up and we're not really using any basing techniques here, we're just gonna good old fashioned paint it. Now the Angel of Death series is situated in a really urban environment. I'm gonna really simply just replicate some tarmac for the base. I'm gonna paint it all black using my nice big chunky boy brush and really simply add a classic hallmark of any road, a broken white stripe. Now we don't want that white stripe to look pristine like it's only just been painted on, you know, Angels of Death is set in a really war-torn gene stealer cult taken over city. So we need to make it look a bit grimy. So we're just going to smother the base with good old-fashioned Nuln oil. Now while that Nuln oil dries, we're going to look at one of the secret weapons to this paint job. It's going to be decals. I'm going to use the traditional faction symbol of the Blood Angels, as well as this white skull. I covered both those decals with water from my clean water cup. And while that was soaking in, I went back to that white line and the tarmac base that we've created. The Nuln Oil did a cracking job making that white line look less pristine, but I just want to make it look a bit more worn out. So I'm going to add some little chopped in lines and cuts and scratches and things like that, just with my detail brush and black paint over that white line, making it look more battle worn and just generally run down. Time to add our decals. I had real fun and games with this one on the shoulder pauldron. It kept folding in half on me, it was so annoying. But luckily I added a bit of water to the pauldron first. If you do that when you're applying decals, it just makes sure that they can glide a little bit more on the surface and it makes it easier to get them into position. I added that one onto the pauldron and the white skull onto the left knee pad. Now once those decals are nice and dry, we've got one final job to do. That's to make those decals look less pristine and more incorporated into the armor. Grab your red paint and your detail brush and all we're doing is adding some more cuts and chips into the decals, similar to what we did with that white line. This will just make those decals look really incorporated into the armor, especially if we've gone for a battle-worn look. Those pristine decals would really stand out like a sore thumb. So I'm gonna add some little chips and it'll make them look really incorporated into the model. And that is it. 24 minutes, 17 seconds. Our Angel of Death is finished. And here he is, the final Angel of Death. I think he looks really good considering this is only five paints, less than 25 minutes of hands-on painting time, really beginner friendly technique. I really do think this is a great result. If you found this tutorial useful, please do check me out on Patreon. Your support for the channel would honestly mean the world to me, plus you'll be eligible for loads of cool things like prize giveaways and other perks as well, so please do check it out. But for now that is it for this video, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, and remember, always paint the rivets.